Apologies, we're pulling away from the situation in Miami because we are hearing in the last few moments that Matt Hancock has resigned as health secretary. That news just coming through in the last few moments. The very briefest of statements, just a few lines emerging literally in the last few seconds. But as we've been reflecting here for the last 24 hours or so on BBC News, the pressure has been building on the health secretary ever since the Sun newspaper uh, had those images on its front page of Matt Hancock uh, pictured in his office uh, with his advisor uh, and the pressure had been really building ever since then. Of course, yesterday we had an apology from Matt Hancock for breaking social distancing guidelines. That is what the apology was for. He admitted that image, to remind you, was from May the 6th. Uh, and so he apologised for breaking the social distancing guidelines because they were very strict rules still in place at that point. Uh, and the Prime Minister saying that he accepted the apology and that he considered the matter closed. But clearly the pressure has been too much uh, just in the last few moments. We hear that he has indeed resigned as health secretary. We've had two Tory MPs openly saying that they felt he should go. So Christopher Chope most recently in the last couple of hours saying to the BBC that he felt his position was untenable. And uh, it appears he has indeed now gone. Our political correspondent, Ben Wright, is with me in the studio. Uh, really only just announced in the last minute or two, Ben. I wonder whether you have a, a statement, uh, any official comms. What are you hearing? Uh, yeah, we've got uh, both the letter from Matt Hancock to the Prime Minister, Jane, and uh, a response from the Prime Minister. He has resigned. Uh, he wasn't sacked. And uh, as you said, he says that last thing he would want is for his private life to distract attention from the single-minded focus that is leading us, the government, out of this crisis. Uh, he reiterates his apology for breaking the guidance, apologises to his family and loved ones for putting them through this. Those are his words. He says, I need to be with my children at this time. Uh, let me see quickly what the Prime Minister said in response. Uh, he says, uh, dear Matt, you should leave office. Very proud of what you've achieved. Uh, thanks him for his service. You made a considerable contribution to government before becoming Secretary of State for Health and Social Care. Uh, previous Prime Minister is grateful for your work. So we've had the exchange of letters. Matt Hancock has clearly reflected over the last 24 hours about where this uh, situation leaves him, clearly personally. I mean, I think this, this feels to me as if this is a decision taken very much in the context of his family, uh, because all through the day today, uh, number 10 has repeated its view that this matter was closed and uh, that he should remain health secretary. Uh, Matt Hancock has, be, has said nothing at all uh, since this story first broke, but now on reflection has decided uh, he needs to go. Because this was a man who was one of the key people making the rules, telling people up and down this country for more than a year to behave in a certain way to try to pre prevent the spread of coronavirus and then it yeah. transpired he had broken those rules, which is the element that he apologised for yesterday. Yes, and I think had he stayed in office, for, you know, for the first few days, weeks even, after returning to the Commons, appearing at the dispatch box, appearing in front of uh, podiums in Downing Street, he would have been asked and pressed about what precisely happened uh, in his relationship with this woman, uh, the history of it, and crucially, whether his advice to people then had any credibility, because he, as he said himself, broke the guidelines on social distancing uh, during, when, he, when he kissed his aide in his office. That was against the guidelines. And so he, he would have, I think, been pressed on this again and again, and it would have been difficult, and it would have distracted from the government's central messaging. So it became, you know, that's what, one reason, I think, why his continuation in office became pretty much impossible. A question of authority. Not, not, is it not, not just breaking the rules? I mean, the rules are one specific thing, and we've talked about that a lot over the last 24 hours. Uh, but it's uh, the commentators we've spoken to who've been calling for him to go say it's a, it's a question of authority. Where is the, is the moral authority uh, next week? Isn't it? We have to we get we get an announcement as yes, to exactly. whether um, as to whether the, we are looking at July the 19th or something different. Uh, and, and he would have been front and centre of those sort of yes, announcements. Yes, that would have that, and that would have really hampered, I think, his ability to deliver that that message. Uh, and 
I was quite surprised that he sort of toughed it out in the way that he did and that the backing of number 10 had been so firm because, you know, this, this had come on the back of a lot of pressure on Matt Hancock in, in recent weeks. I mean, they were the, for one thing, you know, they were the brick bats from Dominic Cummings, uh, Boris Johnson's former senior aide, who had a litany of complaints about Matt Hancock's performance during the pandemic and produced text messages that showed that Boris Johnson at one point called him totally hopeless. But Matt Hancock ploughed on. He survived them. He continued to receive the backing of Downing Street. Uh, then this came out of the blue. And, you know, it felt that this could have been the thing that really tipped it for him and, and might have forced him out. But he, he looked like he wanted to carry on. And, you know, Matt Hancock is an ambitious and relatively young cabinet minister. You know, he's a, he's a survivor as well. I mean, he, he's perhaps the only person from the Cameron Osborne uh, years to sort of made it through the successive prime ministers that then followed uh, the, the, the EU referendum. Uh, he has been, you know, been health secretary during an extraordinary, you know, mm. once in a lifetime pandemic. And yeah. he's very proud and has obviously enjoyed his role at the forefront of all of that. He will be desperately... I think, unhappy to have left his role. But as he says, I think it, this really hinges on consequences for his private life. And I think that seems to be probably why he has decided that this really needs to be the moment that he goes. So that is the essence of the letter. If you are just joining us, uh, I'm with our political correspondent, Ben Wright, with the news that the Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, has now gone following those revelations that we've all been talking about over the last 36 hours. He is indeed standing down as Health Secretary. We'd had two Conservative MPs say publicly in the last 24 hours that he should go. Uh, Which ben, isn't many. I mean, what's, what's strange in, yes, is that indeed. there was very... <laughs> You know, there was not a cacophony of Tory backbenchers yeah. over the last 24 hours saying this was terrible behaviour. He should never have breached his guidelines. He has to go. Social media, the airwaves have been silent. We've had two or three who have spoken out, you know, from the backbenchers. Uh, and Esther McVeigh, a former cabinet minister who said she thought it would be a prudent thing to do. But there was no cacophony for him to quit, nor was there any noise in support, which I thought was revealing. You know, th this was you got no sense of the Tory party in Parliament rallying around Matt Hancock in a way he was just stewing in it alone uh, with the backing of number 10. But there was a sort of ominous silence, I thought, around him during the course of today, uh, which yes. I thought was a bit peculiar. Yes. And what I mean, what were you picking up on in terms of backbenchers and what were you picking up on privately? And, and people think back to Dominic Cummings and last year, were they making comparisons, making well, judgments to, to as be... to which was the... The, the worst crime. I mean, what, what, what are well, people to be, I mean, saying? To be, on, to be honest, they have been keeping their counsel. You know, Tory MPs have been, even in private, you know, off the record, remaining pretty uh, stum about what they feel about this. And perhaps that was a concerted effort, I'm speculating, by Number 10, simply to try and draw oxygen out of this. You know, not provide any voices, either pro or anti Matt Hancock, and just try and let the situation peter out. I, you know, I thought that's probably where we were heading with this. Dependent, of course, on maybe what was going to be in the papers tomorrow. We are currently Saturday evening. Sunday morning papers around the corner. What do they have? I mean, you know, today's were excruciating for Matt Hancock, the front pages and the government. But as I said, number 10 and he seemed set to want to try and ride out this storm. Uh, that has not happened. And Boris Johnson now has to do something which he didn't want to do, which was to have a reshuffle of some sort. Maybe it may be very limited, but now he needs in the middle of a pandemic or the tail end of a, a pandemic, a new health secretary. It's yes. pretty extraordinary. Yes. I, I mean, and you, you mentioned the prime minister. Well, I mean, just on the thought that some have raised as to why there are some voices, even if it's private, who say Boris Johnson should have sacked him. It was so clear that he'd broken the rules. He should have sat. I mean, was that never on the table? Do, what, what, do we do? Well, we he was never. Not I mean, know? he was never going to sack uh, Matt Hancock for the the, the personal indiscretion. Uh, no, that was that was that, that was never that was never likely, or that wasn't going to happen. Uh, and I think you know Boris Johnson has got form in not wanting to sack people. You think back to Priti Patel, who was you know criticised for the way that she had treated staff within her department uh, and whether she'd broken the ministerial code or not. Boris Johnson stood by her. Uh, Dominic Cummings the, is the example. Yes. His chief aide back in the summer of last year broke some of you know ru rules when he went to Barnard Castle. There was uproar from some Tory MPs, but he didn't he didn't quit. And you know he he then, in contrast to now, 
had quite strong backing from members of the cabinet who tweeted their fulsome support for him and said, you know, these were exceptional circumstances, he should stay in his job. And, and, and he did. But Boris Johnson does not want to, he doesn't want to sack people. And he doesn't really, he doesn't like disruption within his, within his top team. And I think they were prepared to try and stick this out. And in terms of uh, legacy, if, if, if we call it that, the vaccination programme, for example, has been an enormous success. And Matt, Honcock, Matt, Matt Hancock will, will, will want to be remembered for that. And, and, and that is why some people will and have supported him. He was health secretary during, as I said, a once in a lifetime pandemic, an extraordinary thing that he could never have expected when he was appointed back in, I think it was July 2018, by Theresa May. And yes, he, he was grilled in front of a select committee two or three weeks ago, following on from Dominic Cummings' appearance at the same select committee a fortnight before, where his reputation had been trashed by Mr Cummings. And he put up a strong defence for himself and said he, he was proud of what he had done. Now, many will be critical, of course, of how the government have handled this. They'll be critical of uh, the, the way PPE contracts were awarded at the beginning. They'll be critical of what happened in care homes in particular. I mean, there is great, great pain around that. Uh, and many hold Matt Hancock in part responsible for a government failure as people were sent to care homes and died in huge numbers. He will, you know, he will look at the vaccination programme, I think, as something that he drove through and be very proud of. I mean, he's had, it's safe to say, an, an eventful time uh, as health secretary. Indeed. Uh, ben, thank you very much for now. Our political correspondent, Ben Wright, uh, I can see your phone is flashing and people are uh, people are sending you reaction as we talk. So I'm going to let you uh, talk to talk to all those people. Perhaps some of those who've been rather more reticent over the last 24 hours will now have a chat with you. And uh, we are joined uh, here on BBC News by Tim Montgomery, the political blogger and activist, um, uh, well known as the founder of the Conservative Home website, of course, among many other things. And Tim, um, well, Fascinating to talk to you again, because I think it is probably exactly 24 hours since you and I were discussing this very matter. So your thoughts uh, now that Matt Hancock has indeed decided to resign as health secretary? Well, yes, it's a big development. And Jane, yes, 24 hours ago, um, I was reluctantly calling for him to do what he has done perhaps 24 hours too late, or a little later than I would have preferred. But you, know, you really cannot have a health secretary devising rules for a pandemic and him not following them himself. It, it's been said so many times in the last 24 hours. I'm not saying anything you haven't heard before, but it matters because that is exactly how people are feeling. And if we're serious about the fight against COVID, we have to have public confidence in both the rules and the people who are setting those rules. So Matt Hancock has done the right thing. My overall view, he's been an effective Secretary of State for Health. He's made some mistakes, as every government in the world has made mistakes on COVID. But many people are alive today because of the vaccine rollout he led. And I hope that he will return to government in the, after a decent time interval. Uh, we've been reflecting here, Tim, in the last 20 minutes or so about the fact that um, two Conservative MPs have, have come out publicly in the last 24 hours and say, said they felt he should go. But the, that's a very small proportion of all Conservative MPs. And there was broadly radio silence on this, on this topic. Uh, I, I'm interested what your take is on, on why that, that was the case. Well, you can read the radio silence two ways. Yes, there were very few Tory MPs calling for him to go. But there were very, very few Tory MPs publicly saying um, that they supported him. I think after the Dominic Cummings affair, when there was real that MPs' postbags filled to overflowing with people angry at the idea that Dominic Cummings wasn't following the rules that they were following. And that was already happening as soon as the Sun broke its story yesterday morning. And I think there was an awful lot of chatter going on from Tory backbenchers and ministers to the Tory leadership saying, we are not going to put up with the same thing again another three, four, five days of being in the defiance of public opinion on, on this same kind of issue. And therefore, he has gone. Does this absolutely draw a line under it, do you feel? In, in, in the public mind, is this, because you're saying it's the right thing to do, is, is this it now? Has that boil been lanced? 
Um, I don't know. Uh, th- th- there is, we've got the Sunday newspapers to look forward to, and in inverted commas, there may well be other angles with Matt Hancock or other ministers. That's certainly what Downing Street fears, I know. And um, I just think the government now needs to be much more ruthless when these sorts of issues come up. When you begin to look like a government where no one resigns because whatever they do, then you begin to undermine the idea that there's integrity in public life. So I'm, I'm sad for, for Matt Hancock because he put his all into protecting the public from COVID, but he did make this big mistake. It needed to be publicly acknowledged he made a mistake, and I hope he revealed his career in due course. And people talk about him a lot as a, a young and ambitious politician still. So is your sense that in the fullness of time, he will, he will one day be back in the Cabinet? I, I would put money on it. I think he <laughs> will be back in the Cabinet. Um, he certainly deserves to be back in the Cabinet um, in a, probably a different role. And of course, you know, he's resigned because of, he was in defiance of COVID rules. But obviously there is a family sadness uh, for two sets of people going on behind the scenes and probably having time to repair that will be good for his, um, his own per- home circumstances as well. And I wish everyone involved well and, and some privacy now, now that he's stepped back from his public role. Tim, very many thanks for your immediate thoughts there. Tim Montgomery, thank you very much. Uh, Conservative commentator, founder of the Conservative Home website, of course. Uh, And Tim and I were talking just 24 hours ago here on BBC News where he said he felt uh, Matt Hancock should go and now it has happened. If you are just joining us here on BBC News, a very good evening. Uh, The news is that Matt Hancock has resigned in the last few minutes as the health secretary. It all follows on from uh, started with the front page of The Sun yesterday morning, of course. Uh, Perhaps I think just worth bringing you some of the uh, sentences from his letter to the Prime Minister in which he does resign. Uh, We've worked so hard as a country to fight the pandemic. The last thing I would want is for my private life to distract attention from the single-minded focus that is leading us out of this crisis. I want to reiterate my apology for breaking the guidance and apologise to my family and loved ones for putting them through this. I also need to be with my children at this time. We owe it to people who've sacrificed so much in this pandemic to be honest when we've let them down, as I have done by breaching the guidance. Uh, All of that, of course, uh, a reference to, uh, we did have an apology yesterday from Matt Hancock, where he apologised for breaching the social distancing guidelines. That uh, was the apology that we received yesterday as a result of that still photograph on the front page of the Sun newspaper. And then over the course of the last 24 hours, you're probably aware there's been video footage that's come through as well from that CCTV camera. Uh, So there's been further coverage today. Uh, the, uh, that video I think uh, you have uh, quite possibly seen by now, but uh, that uh, emerged from the newspapers uh, earlier today. I think uh, we can show you that now. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just being told in fact that uh, Matt Hancock has in fact put his own statement on Twitter. That is what has happened in the last few moments. That's what I'm hearing. Let's see whether we can listen to that. I've been to see the Prime Minister to resign as Secretary of State for Health and Social Care. I understand the enormous sacrifices that everybody in this country has made, that you have made, and those of us who make these rules have got to stick by them, and that's why I've got to resign. I want to thank people for their incredible sacrifices and what they've done. Everybody working in the NHS, across social care, everyone involved in the, in the vaccine programme, and frankly, everybody in this country who has risen to the challenges that we've seen over this past 18 months. I'm very proud of what we've done to protect the NHS at the peak, 
to deliver that vaccine rollout, one of the fastest in the world. Uh, and uh, I look forward to supporting the government and the Prime Minister from the back benches to make sure that we can get out of this pandemic. We're so close to the end and then build back better so that this country can fulfill its potential, which is so great. And I will do that with all of my heart. So that statement posted uh, on Twitter by Matt Hancock, who is no longer health secretary, having been in post throughout the extraordinary uh, year and a half or so that this nation has been living through the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, he has indeed stood down. Uh, a number of Conservative MPs and others had said he should go. We've certainly had Labour and the Liberal Democrats yesterday saying that he should go. And that now finally has happened uh, 36 uh, hours or so, maybe 48 hours after The Sun uh, decided to uh, print that photo of him in his parliamentary office with his aide uh, and his letter to the Prime Minister, reasonably lengthy letter, saying that the last thing I would want is for my private life to distract attention from the single-minded focus that is leading us out of this crisis. Our health correspondent Catherine Burns is with me and these uh, familiar images over that were taken that we're just watching of Matt Hancock from the, from the course of the pandemic, the period that we've all lived through these ex these extraordinary times. Uh, there will there have been uh, negatives in that period and there have been positives that he, Matt Hancock, would want us to remember as what he, he achieved as health secretary. Yeah, absolutely. Throughout the pandemic, he set out certain targets. You remember, he had that 100,000 tests a day target that seemed so far off and it did happen. And, you know, we have had such a mixed record over the pandemic. But right now, you know, the government, this is not what they want us to be talking about. This is the weekend that we were supposed to be talking about grab a jab. We were supposed to be talking about that final push for vaccinations. And it's all changed. It's all about this. And we are at a really, really crucial stage of the pandemic because cases are going up. You know, over the last week, there's been 98,000 people with new infections. This is not a time that you would ideally want to change your health secretary in the middle of a pandemic. And let's not forget as well that the boss of NHS England, nothing related to this, but he is due to step down again soon. So this is a lot of turmoil at a time where we really don't need it. Yes. Uh, uh, I mean, <laughs> are you getting any sense from anyone? Is it too early to think about who might who might be taking on that role, who, who would have the experience, uh, as you say, at a time like this? Questions are being asked, names are flying around, but who knows what they're actually going to decide on. You know, one thing that people are obviously talking about is Jeremy Hunt, who used to have that role, and he now chairs up the Health Select Committee. Whether that would even be possible, who knows? This is something we're just going to have to wait and see, but it's something they're going to have to do very quickly because we're in the middle, well, hopefully towards the end, but at a crucial stage of this pandemic. Yes. Uh, Catherine, stay, stay with us, our, our health correspondent. I'm just going to bring you um, continuing political reaction to this. We've just... We've just had something through from uh, the SM SNP's Westminster leader, uh, a tweet from Ian Blackford, in fact. Uh, this is a massive failure of leadership by Boris Johnson. Matt Hancock should have been sacked. Uh, in Scotland, of course, we will face a choice on our future. We can say goodbye to the chaos and failure of UK leadership and take a step forward. But in essence, uh, in terms of the, the key element that we're discussing here, this is a failure of leadership by Boris Johnson, uh, saying that uh, Matt Hancock, uh, which well, shouldn't have been a question of Matt Hancock resigning, it should have been the Prime Minister choosing to sack him. Uh, in response, just to remind you, we have a, quite a lengthy letter that, that Matt Hancock has written to, to the, um, the Prime Minister, as is standard uh, when there is a resignation of this nature. The Prime Minister, in response, just worth reminding you what his response is. Boris Johnson saying he is sorry to receive his resignation as Health Secretary. And he said, Matt Hancock should leave office very proud of what you've achieved, not just in tackling the pandemic, but even before COVID-19 struck us. I'm grateful for your support and I believe that your contribution to public service is far from over. 
uh, that last line there in terms of the politics of it, echoing what we've heard from a number of contributors, including, uh, for example, Tim Montgomery, uh, the Conservative, in the last little while, the Conservative commentator, who was saying that uh, he believes uh, Matt Hancock will indeed be back in the Cabinet. He said he would happily bet money on that, but that it is absolutely the right thing for him to do to step down right now. Uh, let's ask another Conservative MP whether they feel this has been the right decision. Uh, Sir Roger Gale joins me, MP for North Thanet. Uh, Sir Roger, has Matt Hancock done the right thing? Yes, I think he's done absolutely the right thing. And in fact, I think he's done the only thing that he could do under the circumstances. It's very sad, but as Downing Street is saying, I'm quite sure that he will be back. He's done a very considerable job under very difficult circumstances indeed. And I think he deserves credit for that. But the fact of the matter is that his position had become in, un, untenable. That's also quite clear. And for specifically what reason? For the fact that he broke guidelines that he was such a key part of drawing up and enforcing or for other reasons too? The other reasons are domestic. Those are a matter for Matt Hancock and his family to resolve. The fact that he broke guidelines that he himself had effectively had a hand in setting down and expecting other people to abide by, um, I think, made his position untenable. He could not possibly have stood, could he, at a podium with press briefings for that from Downing Street on, on the pandemic without expecting and knowing that he was going to get questions only about his behaviour and not about the real issues. So... Um, to that extent, his position was un untenable, and I think he's done the right thing. Um, I wish him well, and I hope that in the fullness of time he'll be able to come back. He's a young man, and there's no reason why he shouldn't. But everything you've outlined there was clear 36 hours ago. Shouldn't either he have gone then, or, as many people are starting to say, and we gather that Keir Starmer is saying this already, that, uh, and the SNP has just said it, that actually Boris Johnson should have sacked him? Mr Johnson is not the kind of Prime Minister that tends to sack people. He does stand by the people that he appoints, um, perhaps sometimes unwisely, um, most certainly in the case of Mr Cummings. Um, yes, it might have been clear with hindsight 36 hours ago, but the pressures were quite clearly considerable. We don't know what conversations took place between Matt Hancock and the Prime Minister. We don't know whether the Prime Minister at that point asked him to stay. But I think... Um, those of us who've been around the block for a bit recognise that the writing was on the wall, and I'm quite sure that Matt recognised that as well. Uh, the fact of the matter is he could have taken the decision earlier, but he's taken the right decision, and I hope that he and his family will now be able to move forward. And the timing, the image that this portrays, the mood music of this is is grim, isn't it? This is the weekend where the government is highlighting uh, grab a jab, that's what they've called it, really doing that final push to really get the vaccination numbers up, opening all those centres up and down the country so that you can just walk up, have a jab without making an appointment. That is surely what people should be thinking about and talking about and not this. I'm absolutely certain that that would be one of the considerations that Matt Hancock has taken into account. Once you become part of the story, rather than dictating the story, then you have to go. And I'm quite sure Matt is not stupid. He's a very bright young man. Um, he will have recognised that, and he will have told the Prime Minister that his position was untenable. And the Prime Minister will have accepted his resignation on those terms, and, and that is the right thing to have happened. Um, we don't need the distraction. The person who occupies the position at the moment of Secretary of State for Health has a very, very big job to do indeed. And it's the job that matters. And I'm quite sure that Matt Hancock recognised that. Downing Street recognised it. I think most of my colleagues on the Conservative back benches recognised it. And, and Matt Hancock has done the right thing. And given the timing, uh, the vaccination drive, cases of the Delta variant on the rise, uh, how quickly does Boris Johnson have to act now to get a fresh health secretary in place uh, very, very quickly? The answer to that is very fast indeed. There is a huge job that has to be done. Matt Hancock has been doing a huge job for 15 months, but his replacement now has to hit the ground running, come in, take over, 
um, grab the reins and get on with the job. It is a huge job, and it's not an easy job, and we all need to remember that. The strains, the pressures of, of this task at the moment, as they have been for the last 15 months, are colossal. Do you have your thoughts as to who could step into what you've just described, that enormous task? I've got my own thoughts, but I wouldn't presume to begin to try and tell the Prime Minister who he should appoint. So, Roger Gale, many thanks for joining us so swiftly here tonight on BBC News. The Conservative MP, Sir Roger Gale, making the point as far as he is concerned that Matt Hancock has done the right thing. Uh, I mentioned briefly Sir Keir Starmer, leader of the Labour Party. Uh, that is because a couple of brief tweets have come from him and you see them there on the screen. Matt Hancock is right to resign, but Boris Johnson should have sacked him. Uh, and that is a view, uh, as we were mentioning, echoed by the Westminster leader of the SNP as well, Ian Blackford. He made a similar point. Um, but uh, lots of comments and reaction coming through um, all the time uh, and, uh, and quite a common thread there. A, a lot of people saying, in essence, Matt Hancock has now done the right thing. He had no choice but to resign. Uh, I paraphrase, but there are a, a lot of reaction in that vein as you might appreciate. Let's just hear again that brief statement that Matt Hancock himself uh, put on Twitter in the last little while. Let's just hear that. I've been to see the Prime Minister to resign as Secretary of State.